Hello, my Soccer Universe. Final recap of um, World Cup qualifying games for this international window. I'm actually planning to do this in two videos. I will recap the games here, show maybe a little bit of the standings, but talk about the larger implications and expectations and how it goes going forward. I will do a separate vi video where we also look at the winners and losers from this window. Losers of one of which for sure is my home country. Which gets me to the point that many of you probably were expecting another rant. No, I did not watch that game. I'm quite calm. I enjoyed the Netherlands mauling um, Turkey a whole lot. Wearing the Dutch. This was fun and I think due course is gonna take its path relatively soon. Whether it will get better for Austria, that is a whole different story. But yeah, um, I also find losing to Scotland a little bit a bit more acceptable at the moment as losing to Israel but yeah um, we'll not talk about that I mean uh, for me uh, the overarching theme is um, yeah Oranje fully full-on Oranje Oranje kind of back to where they, they, they should be I think this was the most brilliant uh, Oranje performance we'll talk about it in a little bit that I have seen in a long, 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 long time. This was exhilarating stuff. This was so much fun. And it was not fun kicking Turkey. It was fun seeing them play with fun and showing all the skills. I totally enjoyed that. But yeah, the comeback of the ones that we kind of rode off. I mean, France had a decent performance. We had Italy making a little twist, uh, scoring freely. Germany really on a good roll at the moment. Uh, of course, the Dutch are back. We said that already. And Spain, although uh, it came a little bit unexpected, but Spain is full in the running again uh, of making it. And you see they're even on the number one spot there. They had the biggest uh, improvement with a win at Kosovo. We'll talk about the there as well. Going into it, I mean, another team that is now cruising because of the results uh, this week um, is Portugal have had no trouble winning in uh, Azerbaijan with uh, Bernardo and Andre Silva both Silva scoring uh, and then Diogo Jota who had missed before uh, adding a fourth a uh, third lay, lay down and then Serbia is dropping points but in the most ridiculous way Serbia was controlling the game left and right were knocking on, on, on the door Ireland was more or less holding on but then a freak on goal by Milankovic gives Ireland the point and maybe a little bit justice for them not winning, uh, not winning or at least getting a point out of Portugal. So maybe there's some just, just, just there. But the way the goal came, I mean, yes, there was a cross in, but all the Milankovic Savage wanted to do is to clear it and he hits it with full enthusiasm into Milankovic and who puts it in his own net without having any, 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 anything to do with it. Um, big blow for Serbia right there. And then because that kind of puts the owners now on Portugal and Serbia probably will have to win in Portugal uh, to have a chance of qualifying directly. We come to Austria, Scotland. I, I really don't want to lose too many words there. Austria maybe at the beginning a little bit better, never having any clear chances. I think there was a shot by Arnautovic and then very late, late on a good chance by Baum Baumgartner. Scotland doing what they need, need to do and Hinteregger going wacko by, I mean, you cannot go Greco-Roman wrestling on uh, a Scotsman in the penalty box. It was a penalty. Maybe Austria could have gotten a penalty too. I actually thought this was a so-and-so call. So yeah. Austria completely disgraced themselves. I mean, all the credit after the Euro there, they were saying, I mean, they were in spectator's table, although I think there were many, uh, and Viennese people are known for that, there were many in there that actually wanted to yell at Foda. Now, I have been very critical of Foda, and I want him out as quickly as possible because he is so not the man. The problem is, and I've mentioned also before, that the Austrian Federation, there will be new elections for president, and the way this is going, I'm not sure if anything better is coming. Uh, because we with Andy Herzog or Peter Stöger. And Peter Stöger can do very well, like Foda with a small team. He can get, do miracles, but if he's bigger, uh, I, I think a journalist pulled it. He can do a whole lot with very little, but he does very little with a whole lot, as his Dortmund time was showing. Um, and Andy Herzog, I think, is a train wreck in the making. 
I would wish they just uh, take the assistant coach of Liffering and you get a better team. But that's me. Um, no such trouble though for Denmark who keep on flying high. And the parking again remains probably the best atmosphere this moment uh, in all of Europe. I don't see a better, more positively charged atmosphere than in Denmark. It is actually frightening. And Israel got put to the sword. Yes, it took a little while, but then Paulsen, Kiaskov, Olsen, uh, just before the half, and then Delaney. I mean, they could have scored right off the kick kickoff in the second half. That uh, Delaney may maybe may makes it three, and then Cornelius very uh, late on makes it five. And yeah, I said it before. Israel is very good in offense, they are very bad in defense, and Denmark was a team, they have a plan, they play it nice, they play it well, and they put Israel to the sword. Um, that's what I would have expected from Austria. Maybe not five, but you know, I would have expected that. So uh, Denmark still having not conceded a goal. Bravo, Denmark, absolutely. Uh, I am very, very excited about that team. I hope they don't come crashing down, uh, but I think this can go for a little bit. Um, hoping for crashing down. I hope that the Dutch stay up. I mean, Turkey came crashing down. It was uh, a game, and I don't even think a Turkey was playing that badly, but the Dutch were that good. Just watch the first two goals. I mean, this is something I can watch on a replay all the time. The interplay between David Klaas and Memphis Depay is seems so natural and David Klaas is not maybe the uh, the greatest player of of of, of the world, but it was a brilliant stroke to have him there. I mean, and uh, do you see what four three three does does for the Dutch suddenly? Yeah, they can play again. I'm not saying they are now the favorites to win the World Cup or whatsoever. No, I I'm not saying that. I'm I'm not saying that the Dutch are back on top of the world. I think there are uh, some holes in there. However, you already had a, you have the potential for a really good defense. Get maybe a goalkeeper. Um, you have a really good midfield, and if Memphis Depay is playing out of his mind as he currently does, I wonder if they are cur they're currently outside of the obvious ones. Is there currently a better informed player? I mean, I have never seen Depay play that 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 well. And again, if you have not seen how, please do it as a way of watch the goals, especially the first two. I mean, uh, the, in the first minute, the Netherlands are pressing Turkey, really choking them. They cannot get the ball ball. And David Klaassen then uh, gets the ball, plays with Dupe, with who backs it into David Klaassen with one touch, puts it in the internet. The second goal. They, uh, Memphis Depay, again a one, uh, a one to Day Depay with a slightly chip pass. David Klassen backs heels it out of the air into the path of Depay who just has to pull it in. I mean, wonderful stuff. This was brilliant. I had so much fun. And then it continues and uh, it was, they were never gonna go it up. They got a penalty penalty where Suyunchi uh, got uh, a yellow card and then it all came crashing down for Tur uh, Turkey then when Suyunci so, so uh, got senses and sent off with, with the second um, yellow. And I have to say that Dutch never let up. They knew goal difference counts, they had fun, they brought on uh, other players uh, to give you a know, cope minus came out for the young, so you say this is him a little bit. Then uh, Marlin came on, Thiel came on, Rensch came on, Gravenberg, so a lot of young players and they were never gonna let up. They really took Turkey to, to the sword. Depay, after a uh, nice Berger's assist from a short distance, makes it three. Uh, may, makes it actually four, uh, his third. And then later on, Thiel and Marlin at the 80th and the 9th complete the route. Uh, Cengiz Under pulls one back though, so very, very, very late, late on. But I, I remember it was 4 0, and I was telling tell, tell, tell my wife, this is gonna get really ugly. And I'm, I was even thinking, yep, this will be six. It will be six that they can't con concede the one was maybe a little, little blimp, but you know, brilliant stuff. Uh, I wanna see more of that. Louis van Gaal, you have done wonders. Uh, and this was within three games. He more or less turned around. In, in Norway, you could see some glimpses. It was not quite very working yet. Then they had the Montenegro game where they kind of let, let loose and then against Turkey. And yeah, um, you know, I cannot really say much about Turkey in there because I actually think that the Dutch were that good. 
Nori, 5 1 over G uh, uh, Gibraltar. And that actually adds to the class of the Dutch win that Norway probably should have gotten a better goal difference out of uh, the act there, but they even fall behind. Holland getting three, of course. Um, I think they were, uh, Toast uh, had a few chances and they hit the post or, or, or whatever. And Gibraltar scores, so also not to be sneezed at. Uh, moving on further, of course, uh, Bosnia and Kazakhstan play out a draw because that's what, what they do in this group. However, France also rather uh, impressive and convincing for once. Uh, Spurnaba, um, firm and home crowd in Lyon, or uh, uh, Dessin Chacbieu, I should say. It's Lyon for me, it's the greater Lyon area. Um, but then, uh, Griezmann getting two goals, uh, seemingly a little bit unhinged, both very well taken, the first one, maybe a lucky touch uh, first, but then the second one, brilliant stuff with the outside of, of his foot, and then the, set, the second goal also uh, from a very acute, acute angle uh, with the inside guy, guy, guy got it in, uh, maybe Benzema should have had one, but that was very, very convincing of France, and basically all doubts about France not qual qualifying, which Anyway, we're not that big. Let's own it big. Because if everyone draws in this group, the only team that really will have a chance, I think, is Ukraine. And they just can't get convinced of France. Far ahead. Uh, Croatia also do themselves a big favor by beating Slovenia. 3 0 um, was good crowd in split. Uh, was um, uh, quite a few good goal. I mean, the best thing is that Livaya, who actually plays for Hajduk, scored the, the opener and Pasalic and Vlasic make it a uh, route for Slovenia. And um, remember, Slovenia beat Croatia uh, to start off. So Croatia uh, jumps back there. Russia and Slovakia also winning. So those seem to be the three teams with Croatia and Russia very much said. I mean, the Croatia-Russia game will be the decider, and then it's down to goal difference, potentially, because Croatia and Russia, they cannot find a winner all over. A little surprise right? surprise result, and it was a teeny bit like the uh, Ireland Service Survey game. Armenia had Liechtenstein in the back, left and right, only could score from a Mkhitaryan penalty penalty, had numerous chances, and then goalkeeping mistake, who... Uh, Pat a shot right into uh, a Frick's path who put 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 it in the net. Basically, that kills uh, in many ways Armenia's chances of maybe even going to the playoffs. Um, I mean, winning winning group with Germany. Ger 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 Germany is back. Yes, Iceland hit one the once one once was, but the chances that Germany missed this could have been as ugly uh, for Iceland as it was for Ar Armenia. Germany having fun and I think rebuilding a lot of confidence. Yes, it was only Armenia. Yes, it was only Iceland, but you scored 10 in two games. Maybe the uh, Liechtenstein game was a little damper, but a uh, similar trajectory as the Dutch. I think Germany really going uh, back up. Uh, Gnabry, Rüdiger, Sané and very late, late on Timo Werner gets his, his, his goal. I think the worst thing I can say was the miss by Havertz. That was pretty bad. And North Macedonia, Romania, nil nil. Again, draws don't get you anywhere. A game that I had on the side screen uh, was Greece against Sweden, and Sweden twice hit the post. It has to be clearly clear said, especially in the second minute, and then the game could go the, the other way. But actually, Greece played quite well and had uh, numerous chances. One where uh, you thought the ball was going, what well, 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 was going on, and Robin Olsen just got a hand on it. Um, and then Greece takes, and I thought, I mean, eyes on two screens, but I, th I thought Greece totally deserved to be in the lead there uh, through Pakisetas, uh, the captain. And then Sweden need, 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 need to come, and this is a Sweden team that handed Spain the first World Cup qualifying defeat since 93. I didn't mention that. That is an incredible statistic. You thought Sweden is, will be cruising to the World Cup because Greece... Um, also a little bit disgraced themselves against Kosovo, but Greece really show, showed up. Otto Rehag, ha, 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 there, and then Pavlidis makes it 2-0, and, and I think all of Spain was celebrating there. Uh, quite some pulls went back a few, few minutes later, but Sweden cannot find the equalizer, uh, which probably would, anyway would have, would have been too little, because Spain won in Kosovo also a little bit more work than needed. Uh, Pablo Fornals getting his first goal for Spain, 
And then Ferran Torres uh, in the 990th, also a goal that uh, needed to be decided by VAR. So yeah, uh, Spain back on track, totally back, back on track, much quicker than we ever thought this have happening. But you know, we had an eye on this Greece-Sweden game, that this could be a game that where uh, Sweden def definitely needs to get to one. But I did not, not expect uh, it to be even a win for Greece, because Sweden looked so confident against Spain. So yeah. Three games is a whole lot, and Sweden had a break in, 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 in between. Um, Italy against Lithuania. Mancini did the right thing. Uh, gave a lot of youth players. I mean, the, the starting line was Moise, Ken and Raspadori uh, up front, and both are scoring. Uh, Ken gets uh, the scoring uh, often. Uh, Raspadori shot is uh, deflected by Utkus, and then he scores a second one. Moise Ken another one, and it's 4 4 0 at the half. Uh, then uh, the fun, the funniest goal maybe maybe of the whole whole break. Although the the goal by Ireland was also, but um, Di Lorenzo wants to cross and it and it ends up being in the in the net of uh, Lithuania. Italy back because Northern Ireland manager draw against Switzerland, a game that also Switzerland should have won. We don't need to talk much about that. Uh, they had a penalty that uh, Seferovic was a very it was. About as bad as the Jorginho one, without the weird run-up. Switzerland dominating, dom dominating, but uh, not uh, far, far, far fighting back, getting the draw. And now things are evening out again and uh, things are looking much better for Italy. Belgium uh, getting a, you know, with a also a kind of a B-line uh, B, uh, B line up, getting a 1-0 win at Belarus. Uh, Prat after Salamaker's assist uh, could have been more, so Belarus was hanging in there but never really having a chance. Uh, Wales dropping points against Estonia. Uh, we have to see how this will uh, show going, going, going forward. Albania 5 of San Marino, Hungary 2 1 over Andorra, and then Poland, England. Watch that one. I actually thought, I mean, it was a very tightly contested, it was not a great match, it was tightly contested. I would give Poland uh, the slight advantage. In the first half, where uh, I think Kane once couldn't put a cross on goal, and Lewandowski could not lob the ball over Pickford, those were the big chances. Second half, though, was all England. Uh, but if I was an England fan, I would be very, very um, annoyed that Grealish and Sterling uh, just keep the ball way, way too long. Uh, Grealish tries to draw fouls and then is complaining all, all, all the time. He doesn't need to do that. He can play, pass the ball on and uh, get it going that, uh, that way. And I'm sorry, Sterling, yes, you can dribble great. You need to look to pass, and especially Harry Kane, who is so great on uh, heading it in a few crosses here, here, here and there. I think this was the one thing. However, Kane gets a really brilliant goal. I mean, this was a great shot by him. Uh, yes, Bednarek is right in in the way. And if you look at the re replay, you see later he he reacts late to head it out out the way, but it looks more or less he he gets he he's stucking, then he, he puts puts it on. So there was not not really a chance for Chesney to save that one. Uh, but then England stopped playing, and then it was again Pickford uh, who did not see a Polish striker coming, who uh, kind of hits him and then just saves it. And that actually kick started a Polish. Uh, last ditch offense. I mean, Poland to have a serious chance for qualifying directly needed to win this one. So, I mean, the draw for England is still good, but I think overall England probably would have deserved the point. I mean, it was not undeserved, but I think overall England was the better team. Lewandowski misses one in the 88 and then he assists in stoppage time. Um, uh, Szymanski to make it 1 1. So I let the standings now run. I mean, I kind of, in my talk, I alluded to it already a little bit, but here are where we stand currently.
then for the next international break, which is uh, early October, we have that the Group A Nations League uh, winners, which is Belgium, France, Italy and Spain, they will not be playing World Cup qualifying. So the schedule is kind of a little bit so and so. Uh, we don't have, and also the big teams that are in in that don't have like these must win games. However, I found a few interesting ones. Um, I think on Saturday there are actually three that might be worth the time. Czech Republic against Wales. This is, I think Wales probably can afford a draw. Czechs definitely need to win this one. Um, we had Turkey against Norway. Uh, Turkey needs to come, come, come back, and if Norway actually wins that one, then they can uh, keep on putting pressure on to the Dutch. Uh, the Dutch would hope for a draw there. And I think also Russia, Slovakia is probably a potential tripper for the Russians, although Slovakia, I'm not so sure about them. Germany, Romania, so, so I think Germany probably, we don't need to talk. Switzerland, Northern Ireland, Switzerland needs a win there. No doubt about that. Finland, Ukraine is maybe one that for a second spot since France is are, 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 are so, so, so far away. Um, and then I've been looking at, yeah, Scotland, Israel, maybe, but you see, it is not, it's not the great games that are coming up. In any case, as I said, I actually enjoyed this one. Not watching Austria definitely helped. Uh, seeing the reaction afterwards also helped. So I'm not as down. And as I said, I will do, uh, you will get uh, very soon another video where we'll talk about where things are standing, who was the who were the winners and the losers of this uh, international break now. And yeah, I will talk to you soon. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel and see more. And see ya. Hey, just in case you enjoyed this video, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider following me on social media and actually subscribe to my channel so that you stay up to with everything that happens in my software universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.